Celtic fans, welcome into another edition of Classic Celtics. And today, we are getting into Game 5, one of the most legendary games of all time. And we have our special guest, the legend himself, Tommy Heinsohn, the coach of the 1976 team. So, Tommy, right off the jump, I, I got to ask you, why did you decide to put Havlicek in the starting lineup for this particular game? Because he was John Havlicek. <laughs> He was a, uh, the key uh, offensive player for so many years. And you certainly, he had been injured, of course. And that's what we're, what we're talking about. Uh, he started every time he could start. Once he, he gained the starting lineup, way uh, almost his rookie year. And so, you, so you're going into game five. This is obviously a back and forth series. What do what, you think of the Suns? And what was the game plan to, to try to slow those guys down? Well, the Suns were a surprise to make the finals. Uh, I don't think we were. Uh, but the Suns were a team almost like us, a smallish type team. Uh, so they were going to play almost like we did. Uh, they didn't spread their offense out like we were capable of doing. So uh, we, we had an easier time uh, playing against bigger people. Uh, because we spread the floor. We made their big people have to go out and play defense on a perimeter. Uh, so the Suns, uh, when we played them, they had the uh, advantage of uh, a, a guy that could match up with Dave Cowens, stay with them on the perimeter. Uh, Alvin Adams was the center of the Suns, and he was a very capable guy. So uh, it was like almost playing ourselves. Rebounding the basketball, you've always been uh, – this team in particular had one of the, the biggest net advantages in the history of the NBA. Is that something you drove home? Did you want your guys crashing the offensive board? Well, every uh, thing we did was to set up mismatches on the boards to get rebounds. Uh, whenever we had a mismatch situation, a size mismatch, uh, we had the guy step inside the defender so that he would be the closest guy to the basket. And then we used the speed mismatch, the smallest guy against their big guy, to take the shot. So we had two, what we thought was two opportunities to score. One off the shot of the little man, and the second one was their, our big guy rebounding against their small guy. What? What did you make of how this game is unfolding? You guys came out to a – had a great start to the first half, and then right there, Phoenix starts chipping away and getting back into the game. Well, uh, Paul Westfall, who uh, was uh, – uh, had played for us when we beat uh, Milwaukee, uh, had been traded to the Suns. So uh, – and he was sensational in this game. Uh, this game alone put him in the Hall of Fame, I think, because he, he was the guy that really brought them back. A couple other people made key baskets uh, to send it into the overtimes. But uh, Westfall uh, was throwing running spin moves to the basket. Like, I've never seen anybody else do that move, but do that move in the most opportune time. This game, have you ever been a part of a game that had this many distractions? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it started late at night, and the game actually finished after midnight, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, uh, when we got into the overtimes, people were fouling out. And the most difficult part was matching people up. And then uh, counting on people that were at the tail end of your bench. We had a guy named Glenn McDonald who was uh, forced to play in this game uh, because of foul situations on people. And he produced, and Jim Ard uh, also uh, came off the bench at the center spot after Collins and, and Silas fouled out. And he made a couple of big uh, uh, free throws at the end of the game. So both those guys off the bench, without them and their contribution, uh, we wouldn't have won that thing. Uh, and uh, how they got to have the confidence is that uh, uh, McDonald was a rookie and we played him as Havlicek's substitute during the regular season. He didn't play an awful lot of minutes in every game, but he played an awful lot of games. 
So he wasn't quite a rookie by the time we got to the playoffs. And he knew the style of play, and he was made for the style of play. He was a quick guy who could shoot the ball, and he was a willing runner. So he was very effective. Made, I forget how many points he actually got, but he, uh, he made a couple of big baskets uh, to win the game. When, when Hondo hit that shot, you're, you got to be thinking, this thing is absolutely over, right? Everyone runs, a crowd storms the court. Who informed you that you had to go back out there? Uh, the other officials. Uh, there was one second left on the clock, supposedly. And the crowd was on the floor celebrating our championship, and they made the crowd uh, go back into their seats. Uh, half of the Celtic ball club was in the locker room already, ready to pop the champagne and uh, uh, were called back on the floor. I mean, it was pandemonium. And once the crowd found out that um, they had a, uh, there was one second left on the clock, they went after Richie Powers, the official, uh, and, and the police actually had to escort people off the floor uh, so we could resume the game and Richie Powers stay alive. 